Ahoy there, my dear friends. Today, I have a most extraordinary tale to share with you. On a fateful Christmas Eve, the Gobstopper discovered that his Christmas tree topper would not stay atop the tree and was ruining the holiday cheer. But never fear, for he had a stroke of genius. He would use his trusty 3D printer to create a solution and save Christmas. And thus, I present to you a peek at just how he used the 3D printer to keep the tree topper standing tall and proud. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for the full video, where I'll take you behind the scenes and show you just exactly how he made this happen. Today, I'm going to show you how I created an object to secure this Christmas tree topper to our artificial Christmas tree using a 3D printer. So the problem is that the coil on the tree topper is too flexible to stay securely attached to the top of the tree, which is also too flexible to support the weight of the topper. So to solve this issue, I'm going to make a shape called a frustum that will fit into the bottom of the coil and provide a stable base for the tree topper to rest on and it will fit to the top support of our tree. So this should keep the tree topper in place and prevent it from falling off. So for those that are unfamiliar with that term as I was, a frustum is a unique 3D object that is derived by cutting the top of a cone or a pyramid. The portion that is left after cutting the peak of a cone or a pyramid is known as a frustum. So in other words, when you cut the top off a cone, the shape that's left over, the bottom part, that's the frustum. The top is obviously still a cone. The measurements that I will need to create this shape in Fusion 360 are the diameter of the bottom base, the diameter of the top base, and the height or the distance between the top base and the bottom base, okay? So what I'm also going to do is I'm going to create a hole in the bottom of this frustum to set right on this top bar. So what I'm also going to do is measure the diameter that I need to make this hole or this insert hole on the bottom of the frustum piece that I'm going to be making. And now that we have all our measurements, we can jump over to the computer. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Fusion 360. That's where I'm going to be creating this shape. And I am no expert on Fusion 360. I am no expert on uh, 3D rendering. I can do very basic things and this is some being something very basic, I can create this no problem. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is create our bottom diameter, or our bottom base, and that's the diameter of the bottom. So once we get that in, um, what we're going to do is create a offset plane. And my offset plane is gonna be based off the plane that I just created, or the sketch that I just created. And that's going to be our height, so that's going to be the distance between the lower base and the upper base. So then um, we're going to create an additional sketch, and this is going to be for the upper base. And I did make an error. Um, because uh, for some reason, um, I think I clicked the wrong sketch plane. I created it backwards, um, which really isn't a big deal. Um, doesn't doesn't affect at all. I created it upside down. Um, but anyway, um, like I said, not a big deal at all. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select both uh, profiles, and I'm going to be using the loft tool. And so what the loft tool does is, is pretty cool. You can select two different profiles 
and loft them together and it just fills in all of the um, space between the two along those profiles and you can select it to be a center point or you can do your own profiles uh, which is a little bit more complicated um, but nonetheless with, with two button clicks I now have a shape and this is the shape that I had in my head and so now what I'm going to do is on this bottom portion of our frustum that just created I'm going to create the, a hole for the bottom so I'm going to create a center point circle the same that I've done with the other circles and set this to be a little ta a tad larger than the diameter of the top of the Christmas tree rod and that is to allow for shrinkage and plastic expansion. Um, when the plastic prints, if you put the exact measurements, the hole will be too small. So you do want to give a little bit of variance so that way when the plastic shrinks, it's not too small. So now that I've created the sketch for the hole of the top of the Christmas tree, I'm going to extrude it, but instead of extruding it out, I'm going to extrude it in and use the cut function or cut feature. And now we have the shape that I need. I'm going to rename the body. I'm going to export this over uh, as an STL file. And then we are going to open this up in Cura. As you can see, everything's been pretty simple so far. I just created a shape, saved it as an STL file, and now I'm going to go and open up that STL file, um, and I'm going to open it up with Cura. Once everything looks good in Cura, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save it to uh, an SD card, and then put it into the printer and click print. And I apologize, I didn't get the printing of this, so we'll jump right over to the final product. The printing of this took about two to two and a half hours, but I do use a 0.6 millimeter nozzle, so I can print things pretty quick. Yeah, so that's how it's gonna work. It's gonna set right on top, and the tree topper is gonna set right on it. And as you can see on the counter, it works pretty nice, so let's go try it on the tree. So the rod in the tree should fit right into the hole. And it seems to fit pretty snug. So now we're gonna put the tree topper on, and that works perfectly. It does exactly what it's supposed to. Thanks for watching my video, guys. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and happy holidays and Merry Christmas from the Gobstopper and family to you and yours.